Hello, I'm Dr. Robin Gansert, and welcome to American Humane in Action. As an animal lover, you may already know that American Humane is this country's very first national humane organization and has been fighting for the humane treatment of all animals since way back in 1877. Today, we are proud to say that we save, shelter, feed, and protect nearly one billion animals around the world. Those in our homes, those who are caught in war, natural disasters, and cruelty cases, the animal actors we so love in movies and television, endangered species in zoos and aquariums, and hundreds of millions of animals living on farms and ranches. At American Humane, our mission is to help animals whenever and wherever they are in need. Why? Because we love them, and I know you do too. On this episode of American Humane in Action, we're diving into our famed rescue program, and we'll hear firsthand what we are doing on the ground to save animals at risk in floods, hurricanes, fires, and sadly, from abuse and cruelty. We'll talk to leading experts and discuss what saving animals means to them and looks like in the field. In 1914, one of the greatest humane disasters in history struck as nearly the entire planet was consumed in conflict. The world was at war and the age of horses in combat was coming to a devastating end. With over 8 million horses from both sides dying on the front lines, help for these poor animals was urgently needed. Accepting an invitation by the United States War Department, American Humane developed a rescue program designed to help America's war horses and mules on the bloody battlefields of Europe. We sent medical supplies, ambulances, and veterinarians to the front lines, carrying for 68,000 injured war horses each month. As a pioneer in animal disaster relief, the American Humane Rescue Program was a huge success and showed the world that all of our animal friends deserve our care and respect. Today, American Humane Rescue operates a fleet of emergency response vehicles equipped with specialized disaster gear designed for animal search and rescue. An army of highly trained staff and more than 200 responders have been trained in locations all across America and are standing by 24-7, waiting for the call to help. Leading these brave first responders are our American Humane Rescue staff, one of whom is here with us today to talk about some of the most dramatic rescues we've made in recent years. Amber Battinger is a veterinary technician and a disaster and cruelty response specialist for American Humane Rescue. She's dedicated her life to helping animals in need and has been involved in many of the country's most dangerous calamities, affecting pets, domestic animals, and wildlife. Amber, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Robin. It's an honor to be here. Well, Amber, you have been involved with some of those, I don't know, frightening disasters in our country's recent history. Share with us one of your experiences. Thank you, Robin. Um, like, like you said, I have been involved in countless natural disasters, um, but nothing really could prepare me for the devastation I saw after Hurricane Dorian um, struck the Bahamas in September of 2019. Um, you see, you, from, from your home, you see you know, the video footage on television, you see the news, but when you actually step on the ground there um, in the Abacos, it was beyond comprehension, the level of devastation that that we witnessed there, just a complete and utter catastrophic disaster. Everything flattened for as far as the eye could see. And um, when we got on the ground there in September, we immediately just started rescuing animals from the debris. Um, we were scouring every flattened house on the island for any animal that may have survived this disaster. There's one particular story that breaks my heart. Yes. Hurricane Florence. Yes. Can you just paint a picture of what it was like to deploy to Hurricane Florence? Yes. Uh, Hurricane Florence uh, hit the Carolinas in September of 2018, and it brought a lot of water to the Carolinas. And when we arrived there, you couldn't even see, all you could see was the peak of the roof of these homes, just to give you an idea of how much water there was. Um, and we were going by boat from home to home, um, pulling animals from flooded homes. Um, there was one home in particular that none of us were prepared 
before, regardless of our training and what we've seen. Um, we heard barking from outside of a home, and we were able to enter the door. The water was neck high, completely. Now wait a minute, the water was neck high? The water was neck high. Um, we, there was only an entrance about, I would say this high to get into the door. We had to duck underwater to get into the home. Um, and what we saw in the home, the home was pitch black, so we had to use our, um, our light from our helmet to be able to see, but what we saw in the home was beyond imagination. Um, there were kennels stacked on top of each other. Dog um, kennels. Dog kennels, um, and obviously the kennels below the water level. Um, you know, we were not able to rescue those dogs, and the dogs that were in the kennels above the water had survived by um, unfortunately floating on top of some of their deceased companions. Um, they were, there was a mother with puppies who was holding her babies in her mouth and on her back. Um, they were using, they were, their paws were, were bloody from trying to climb up the wire. It was absolutely the most, you know, to, to get to enter that home and have to really quickly, um, you know, just be, we need to get these animals out and not to take a moment to be like, wow, this is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Um, but we were able to rescue eight dogs from the home. Um, eight dogs that we were able to bring back um, and to stabilize. They had been in there for, for days um, in that condition. So we were able to bring them back to our facility, stabilize them and, uh, you know, get them on the track to, you know, a healthy, happy future. But um, it just goes to show why disaster preparedness is so important because um, you should never be faced with a situation where you have to leave your animals behind in a situation like that because that just goes to show how devastating that can be for our, for our pets and our families. You know, you talk about going into a Hurricane Florence deployment. You're in water that is neck high. And of course, then you're in there and you're operating in such dire conditions and you're rescuing animals. That takes a lot of training. Can you share with me types of training that you've been through? Absolutely, it does. Um, we follow the uh, incident command system um, of FEMA. So we've taken um, all of the, the rescue staff and rescue volunteers have taken incident command system courses. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have taken a swift and slack water rescue training. So um, swift water training? Yeah, we have wow. taken swift water training where we're certified to rescue animals um, from swift and slack water. Mm -hmm. um, we've also taken courses for wildland fire. Um, we've taken high angle um, certification classes, large animal um, uh, technical rescue courses, so equine CPR. So there's a lot that goes into it to uh, get us prepared for these disasters, but we you know, are very grateful for the opportunity to be able to serve these animals and to have these qualifications and skills to do so. Well, I think you have a, a, a pet here that needs yeah. to be introduced. Okay. Tell us who's with us. This is my dog, Reba. Um, she is my personal pet. Um, she's actually a cruelty survivor herself. Um, she was, I rescued her from a shelter um, in South Florida and she had been um, abused. She was covered in cigarette burns. Um, so it took several years to build her trust up and to get her, you know, to be at this level. Um, but she's just very uh, taking it all in and very happy to be here with you and, and everyone. So um, Reba, she's thrilled to be great. here. She's she's just taking a nap. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like to me that she's found her forever loving home, oh, which absolutely. you provided her. She is my whole world. So absolutely. That's wonderful. Thank you, Amber. You're one of our humane heroes. Thank you, Robin. After this short break, we'll be back with a very special friend who embodies the spirit of generosity and love for animals that drives our rescue program. Hi, I'm Arielle Winter. If you're anything like me, your pets are not only your best friends, they're part of your family. American Humane, which has been rescuing animals like Cleo here for more than 100 years, has life-saving tips that can make a big difference before during, and after disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, or wildfires. So when disaster strikes, you want to be prepared to protect them. Be sure to microchip or tag your pets. Never leave them behind in a major crisis, and be sure to have an emergency kit ready in your home at all times with a pet crate or carrier, leash, blanket, ID, and medications, their water bowl, and seven to 10 days worth of food. To find out how to protect your entire family during a disaster and help our best friends in their worst times, please visit AmericanHumane.org.
For 140 years, American Humane has been working to make our world a better and kinder place for animals, veterans, and others in greatest need. You can help by making a gift through your will or charitable annuity that helps build a more compassionate future for both animals and people. Make kindness your legacy. Visit AmericanHumane.org to learn about how you can help ensure a better, more caring world for all of us. Janet Swanson has been to the scene of disaster after disaster, helping save lives and making a huge difference for animals. I recently had a chance to catch up with Janet from her home in Florida. Janet, welcome to the show. Hi, Robin. Thank you for having me. To start us off, can you share a little bit about how you got involved with American Humane? Uh, yes, it, it actually began with a conversation that I had with you years ago at what I think was the first hero dog event in uh, California. Uh, you and I were just chatting about American Humane and, and what American Humane does. And the animal rescue work came up and my thought was I'd really love to be able to do that, but I have no training, no idea uh, about how to do it. And you said, well, that's okay, we'll train you. And uh, you did, and I went to uh, a number of classes. Without that conversation, I don't know that it would have happened. Janet, as a national ambassador for American Humane, you've been on a number of rescues. Can you tell us about one that sticks out particularly in your mind? Well, that would be uh, the flood in West Virginia uh, in 2016, where we had uh, two trailers set up to do medical exams and uh, inoculations, whatever was necessary when, when people brought their animals in. And these were animals that uh, had been in floodwaters, and it was amazing to meet their their people, their their family. Uh, there was one couple that brought in a dog, and when these people would come in, they wouldn't just say, "Here's my dog" or "Here's my cat." They would talk to you about their experiences. And this particular couple with with their dog originally had two dogs and they lost one of their dogs in the flood. And that they talked about it and it, it was just devastating and heartbreaking. Uh, but they were so grateful. Everybody that brought their pet in was just so grateful that American Humane was there. And there was an incident of a woman who had saved three kittens and she'd seen the mother washed away, but the kittens were floating on something and she was able to save them. Uh, and she brought them to us. At the time that she brought them, they were a week old and we were there for, she brought them to us early in the deployment. We were there for, for a week. So by the time we were ready to leave, uh, there developed a problem finding someone who would take care of the kittens or a shelter that would take them. So we wound up adopting them. Uh, one of the other team members adopted the two boys and I adopted the little girl. And actually tomorrow's her birthday, uh, she'll be five. And she's a sweet, devilish, adorable, feisty, probably spoiled cat. <laughs> uh, and her name is Hava. She's the, the first and so far the only one who's come home from a deployment with me, but I, I had flown uh, up there. And uh, so we, we flew in and out of Pittsburgh and uh, everybody in the airport loved her because how often do you see a two week old kitten being hand fed in the middle of an airport? What a wonderful heartwarming ending. Uh, does the name have any special meaning? Uh, it's, it's Hebrew, I kind of chopped up a word, uh, and it, it basically means love. It's, that's not a literal translation, but it comes from the verb, which means to love. Janet, my last question, what inspires you to continue your volunteer work at American Humane? It's about the work, it's, it's the animals. 
you know, it's, it, it's really a joy to be involved with people who care so much about animals and, and their welfare and uh, all aspects of their lives. We couldn't do it without the dedicated volunteers and supporters like you. Thank you, Janet, for all you've done to save America's animals. It's an honor to know you. Oh, thank you for having me, Robin. It's, it's, it's just wonderful watching everything that American Humane does. It's, it's just a terrific organization. So thank you. It takes an entire community to protect those who have no voice, including local experts who have a lot of skills, and more importantly, a lot of heart for animals in need. Dr. Jennifer Dunlap is a veterinarian specializing in horses. Our American Humane Rescue Team has been fortunate enough to team up with her on several high-profile abandonment and cruelty cases. And I recently had the chance to talk to her about our work together. Hello, Jennifer. It's so good to have you on the show after working on so many heartwarming and sometimes heartbreaking rescues together. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us what it's like to work with the American Humane Rescue Team? Yeah, I've been fortunate to work with American Humane for over a decade now. I first met American Humane at the Flood Disaster Shelter in Memphis in 2011. And since then, we have worked on a lot of cases together. And each time I get to work with American Humane, I get more and more impressed with the skill sets and the dedication uh, that they bring to each case. And it's exciting to get to work with them. We know that we're going to get uh, good results. And we know that we're going to save a lot of animals when we get to work together. I know you've been involved in some of the more challenging cases like the PAR case, which involved a staggering 168 animals. Can you share a little bit more about that one? It was a very horrific scene. It took us 14 hours to clear the house out. Uh, not only were animals being hoarded, but garbage was being hoarded in the home as well. And we did not leave any piece of newspaper or any dust by, you know, dust ball um, unturned looking for animals to get them out. And so by the time we had everybody rescued, uh, we had rescued dogs who were in a dark room where they had not seen sunlight likely in years. Uh, they were caged four and five dogs high. And we had cats and ferrets and birds and even some Komodo dragons. And so wide variety of animals uh, that were brought out. And American Humane did an outstanding job um, caring for each and every one of them. Uh, because as you know, each of those species needs a, a, you know, different types of food, different types of environment. And we were able to set up the emergency shelter uh, that we got set so that each of those species had their own room and they had their needs met with their air conditioning, with the heat, uh, with their food needs. And um, it, it was astounding you know, how they just leapt into action. And within just a few days, you know, it was really running like clockwork and the animals were responding to the care. Um, and we, it was just a, a really, really uh, wonderful thing to see because in, in those situations, we see the worst of humanity uh, with the, the people who are abusing the animals. And then we see the best in humanity uh, when we work together as, a re as rescuers uh, to get the animals to safety. I wonder if you'd like to share just one or two stories about our work together, particularly one that has really touched your heart. During, in the PAR case, we had two little Chihuahua brothers. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was very shut down and one of the American Humane volunteers realized that he would not eat unless he got to be right next to his brother. And so we were able to set their little situation up in their, in their crates. So they got to eat right next to one another. They spent all day together. Um, and they would go outside together. And so it really, really, uh, I think that's what saved him. He was so psychologically shut down. He'd been separated from, you know, who he identified as his little brother. And when we got them together, um, they, they both just, um, it was astonishing how well they did. And we made sure that they got adopted together as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, doing cases like that, where a volunteer picks up on these subtle things that makes all the difference for the animals. Um, it, it's just, it's incredible. Yes, and I also recall the rescue we did to help Scooter and five other horses who'd been starved nearly to death. Yes, Scooter and his five companions, mm -hmm. um, they were in a field where there was no edible forage. Scooter was the oldest in the crew, and when we arrived on scene, Scooter was down in the field. He could not even lift his head. And Alan, one of the American Humane responders, and I were the first in the field 
because we didn't want to startle the horses. So just the two of us went in with halters and leads first and we radioed back that Scooter was down. And within about 10 to 15 minutes, we had Scooter on oxygen. He was receiving IV fluids. And then we actually had to hack a path uh, through Grapevine to get our rescue rig in uh, because he was so far back in the back of the pasture. And luckily we were able to get it right up beside him. We used a truck lift with ropes uh, to get him to stand just long enough so he could stagger into the back of the trailer um, so that we could, and he collapsed in the trailer. Uh, luckily we had somebody with him keeping him on oxygen and fluids and got him back to our emergency shelter where uh, American Humane staff and volunteers uh, maintained him literally in a 24 seven ICU situation. Um, he received blood transfusions. He was on oxygen on, we had to give him a lot of plasma to keep his protein up because he was so starved down to next to nothing um, that even his blood vessels were leaky. And so we had to do a lot just to keep him going. And he was sort of the star of our, of our calendar that year. He survived, went on to be adopted. Everyone in the case survived, you know, many thanks to, to American Humane's ability, you know, to really staff a, uh, an emergency shelter 24 seven like that. Thank goodness you and the American Humane Rescue Team are there to make a difference for Scooter and these beautiful horses. You know, American Humane started its rescue work by saving wounded war horses in World War I. And here we are more than 100 years later, still saving these noble animals. We are proud and honored to have you as an ally on the front lines in our continuing battle to rescue our animal friends. Thank you so much, Robin. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Hi, I'm Vivica Fox. For more than 100 years, American Humane has been helping our best friends in their worst times, during hurricanes, tornadoes, and increasingly, wildfires. They're real heroes to these animals. But Mother Nature isn't the only danger that animals face. Sometimes, it's human nature that's the greatest threat. Each year, more than six million beautiful adoptable animals are being abandoned and more than a million are euthanized before they can be rescued. These animals need heroes too. Heroes to open up their hearts and homes and to give them the love they deserve. Be a hero to an animal in need. Consider becoming an American Humane Rescue Volunteer or adopt from your local shelter. Visit AmericanHumane.org to find out how you can be a hero and help our best friends in their worst times. For more than 140 years, American Humane has been working to protect and make the world a kinder place for animals. You can help too. Visit AmericanHumane.org for simple ways to build a more compassionate world for all of us. When our brave servicemen and women return home, they often carry with them the invisible wounds of war. Professionally trained service dogs can help but then cost upwards of $30,000 and waiting lists are long. American Humane provides free life-saving service dogs to deserving warriors, but we need your support. Please don't leave our veterans behind. Visit AmericanHumane.org to help now. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass and this is Chip. And for more than 100 years, American Humane has been protecting animals in times of crisis. And if you're like me, your pet means the world to you, and you want to keep them safe if disaster strikes. American Humane's first responders are always prepared to rescue animals in danger, but you can also help. To learn more about disaster planning and keeping your animals safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. My next guest is one you know very well and is loved by millions of her fans. Barbara Niven is one of the most talented people I know, an actress, director, producer, and writer. Best known for her performances in Hallmark and Lifetime movies, a favorite on One Life to Live, and she even played Marilyn Monroe. She's a superstar, an animal lover of the first magnitude, and a national ambassador for American Humane. Hello, Barbara. Hey, Robin, thanks for having me. We get to talk about American Humane and Animal Rescue, my favorite things. Barbara, what inspired you to become involved with American Humane? Oh, well, I met American Humane during the first American Hero Dog Awards that I got to present at. 
And the more I learned, the more I wanted to just be involved with it. And in this year, in fact, I even got to be a judge of the semifinalists. So I can't wait to find out who wins with all of you at the American Hero Dog Awards. We'll see you there this year again. You play a lot of very glamorous roles, but you certainly are not afraid of going into some pretty rough situations when animals need your help. Yes, I had been actually begging American Humane to let me go on a deployment. So I'm, I don't wanna be somebody who just sits on the sidelines and presents an award. I wanna go out and make a difference. And so I got the call that there were 225 dogs that were being rescued out of a horrible puppy mill situation in Washington. And I was on the next plane. And I was part of a team who showed these animals the love and security and food and kindness probably for the first time in their lives. And I was so impressed by the American Humane team and all the other rescues that came together. There was a rescue out of Spokane and everybody did their job. And in two days, we got those dogs out of that situation, got them housed, got them medical, uh, whatever treatment they needed, and then off to all the other rescues. Barbara, those animals might not even be alive today if it weren't for you and our rescue team. On behalf of those sweet dogs and all the animals who've been saved from terrible fates at the hands of those who should have cared for them, thank you. Thank you. And this is Maggie. And she says, thank you. Hi, oh, Maggie. Hi, oh, Maggie Mouse. She's my little fighter. She just survived cancer surgery and chemo. And she is a warrior, just like everybody at American Humane. So from all of us to you, thank you for what you did. We can all play a part in protecting animals by supporting animal rescue and adopting from shelters by making humane choices at the supermarket, by visiting American Humane certified zoos and aquariums, and by making sure in our entertainment choices that no animals were harmed. If you were inspired by the show, join us and the compassion movement by supporting American Humane and its work to save, shelter, feed, and protect animals. And please visit AmericanHumane.org and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so we can keep you up to date on all the latest news about the beautiful animals who share our world. I'm Dr. Robin Gansert. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll tune in to all of our episodes of American Humane in Action for an inside look at the innovative efforts that are building a better, more humane world for all of us.